Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the different types of Wi-Fi networks that are available. Wi-Fi services are defined in the IEEE 802.11 standard, and IEEE stands for the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. In the CCNA exam, the terminology that is used comes straight from the 802.11 standard, so that's the terminology that I'll be using throughout this section. So the different types of wireless networks that we have. First up is a WPAN. That's a wireless personal area network. In a WPAN, the devices are very close together within 10 meters of each other. And Bluetooth is often used for the connectivity here. A WLAN is a wireless local area network that provides access to a campus network. That campus will typically be a wired network and having Wi-Fi also allows you to connect to it wirelessly as well. It is possible that the entire network, like the entire building, your corporate office, everybody is connecting there wirelessly, but more likely there's going to be a wired network there. With a WLAN, it allows you to connect to that wired infrastructure without the need for a wire, a cable yourself. And the devices are within 100 meters of a wireless access point with a WLAN. We'll be talking a lot more about wireless access points throughout the rest of the section. Finally, we have a WMAN, which is a wireless metropolitan area network that covers a large area such as a city. And for the CCNA exam, it really focuses on WLAN, wireless local area network for wireless access to a corporate campus. Okay, looking at ad hoc networks now. So with ad hoc networks, two or more wireless stations communicate directly with each other. So your first bit of terminology there, whenever you've got a device communicating on the wireless network, it's known as a station. So with an ad hoc network, that is a peer-to-peer -peer network where your wireless stations are communicating directly with each other. And that peer-to-peer -peer network is known as an IBSS, an independent basic service set. So you can see in the example here, I've got three laptops. They're all communicating directly with each other. The circle on the left is the laptop on the left's coverage area. You can see the coverage area for this laptop here, and then the coverage area for this laptop here. Because they're all in each other's coverage area, they're all able to communicate directly with each other. But it's probably pretty obvious. You can see there's going to be a scalability issue with this, because what if we add another laptop to the picture, and now this laptop is in the coverage area of the two other laptops nearest to it, but it's outside the coverage area of the laptop on the left. So there's that scalability issue with ad hoc networks. It only really works for a WPAN, a wireless personal area network, where the devices are all very close to each other. So this is where infrastructure mode comes in, which can solve that scalability issue. In infrastructure mode, Rather than the devices communicating directly with each other over wireless, they communicate via a wireless access point. So you can see the two laptops here, when they're communicating with each other or anything else, they're going to be sending frames to the wireless AP, and it's a wireless AP that forwards those frames on. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that the wireless AP has also got its own coverage area. So how does this solve the scalability issue that we had in ad hoc networks? Well, the first reason is that the wireless AP can be connected to the wired network. So this now gives your wireless devices access to that entire wired network and beyond it. And also, you can deploy multiple wireless access points so that you get coverage across the entire area that you want. Now, wireless stations work in either ad hoc or infrastructure mode they can't operate in both at the same time so what if you're in the corporate office you're connected to the wireless lan 
but you also want to connect to a wireless monitor as well. Well, does that mean you can't do it? Well, there is a solution for this, and that is Wi-Fi Direct. Wi-Fi Direct allows devices to be connected to an access point, so they're in infrastructure mode, and also be part of a peer-to-peer -peer wireless network. But I thought I just said that you can't have infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode working at the same time. Well, that still holds because with Wi-Fi Direct, it does not operate in ad hoc IBSS mode. It's an extension to infrastructure mode, so it's still infrastructure mode. WPS, Wi-Fi Protected Setup, enables connection setup by pushing a button, so it's very easy to set up. And it's a WPAN wireless personal area network because for the peer-to-peer -peer connection, the devices have to be close together. The predefined services that are available with Wi-Fi Direct are Miracast to a wireless external monitor, DLNA, Digital Living Network Alliance, allows devices to stream music and video to each other, and they can also direct print. Another couple of things to tell you about, wireless bridges is the first one. Wireless bridges can be used to connect areas which are not reachable via cable to the network. So in the example here, you can see over on the left, maybe this is our warehouse, and it's not possible to get a wired connection going in there from the main building. Well, what we could use to get connectivity to the warehouse is we could put a wireless bridge in there and have a wireless connection going over to the main building. So a wireless bridge is often used to give connectivity between buildings where a cable is not possible. And the last one is mesh networks. Mesh networks are becoming very popular in home networks now. This is another option to spread the coverage area of a wireless LAN. One AP radio is used to serve clients and the other radio in the AP connects to the backhaul network. So you can see here, we've got our main switch here. It's connected to an AP and then we've got a backhaul on the five gigahertz radio to another AP and then another backhaul to another AP. And this could go on as well. So you can see that this can extend the coverage area, giving you a large wireless coverage area and still connected into your wired network. Okay, that was everything. I needed to tell you here. See you in the next lecture for more wireless. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.